The dark side of keeping power in the family shapes some of history's most powerful dynasties. Throughout the ages, royal families believed they could maintain their grip on power through a dangerous practice, inbreeding. Little did they know this decision would eventually contribute to their downfall. Join us as we explore the dark side of inbreeding, uncovering the sad stories and looking at the lasting effects of this controversial practice. Welcome to History Beast. Do you remember King Charles II of Spain? After generations of cousins marrying cousins and uncles wedding nieces, the bloodline of the Habsburg dynasty culminated in King Charles II of Spain, born in 1661. Charles embodied the devastating consequences of inbreeding. He struggled to walk, could barely speak, and suffered from a host of health problems. His inability to produce an heir proved fateful, as his death in 1700 marked the end of the Habsburg's 200-year rule in Spain. What drove these powerful families to continue such a destructive practice? The answer lies in their obsession with maintaining power. Royal families convinced themselves their bloodline was divine or special, viewing marriage to outsiders as a threat that would dilute their supposed greatness. They also feared that bringing other families into the fold would spark political rivalries and destabilize their rule. But the Habsburgs weren't alone in this practice. Centuries earlier in ancient Egypt, the pharaohs had made sibling marriage a cornerstone of their dynasty. Perhaps the most famous example is King Tutankhamun. Born to a brother-sister pair, the young pharaoh paid a heavy price for his parents' choice. He lived with painful physical deformities, including a club foot that made each step an ordeal. His early death, at around 19 years old, left many wondering what might have been. Inbreeding happened more often in history than most people realize. This practice wasn't just limited to one place. It occurred everywhere, from tiny isolated islands to powerful kingdoms. Many ancient societies encouraged family members to marry each other because they thought it would protect their way of life. They believed keeping marriages within the family would preserve their traditions, social status, and wealth. Looking back, we can see they thought they were making a smart choice, even though we now know the serious health risks this created. But not all powerful families made this mistake. The Vikings, known mostly as fierce warriors, actually built successful settlements by marrying local people wherever they went. The Roman Empire became strong partly because they welcomed different kinds of people into their society. These success stories show that mixing with other groups, rather than staying isolated, helps societies last longer. Inbreeding wasn't just something that happened in royal families. It also occurred in isolated communities around the world, but for different reasons. While royals married relatives to keep power in the family, isolated communities often did it because they had few other options. The remote Tristan da Cunha Islands are a good example. With few outside visitors, people had limited choices for marriage partners. Ancient Egypt provides one of the most fascinating examples of family marriages, particularly during the time of the pharaohs. This practice began around 3100 BC with Pharaoh Narmer and reached its peak during the Ptolemaic dynasty, 305 to 30 BC. Ptolemy II and Philadelphus notably married his full sister Arsinoe II, setting a precedent that would continue for generations. The pharaohs had an interesting way of justifying these marriages. They compared themselves to Isis and Osiris, Egyptian gods who were also brother and sister, making their family marriages seem divinely approved. Even Cleopatra, the famous last ruler of ancient Egypt, followed this tradition. Despite being known for her intelligence and charm, she married two of her younger brothers, as was expected of Egyptian rulers. These marriages weren't just about tradition. They were carefully planned political moves. By keeping marriages within the family, pharaohs made sure outsiders couldn't gain power through marriage. This kept both wealth and authority firmly in the hands of the royal family. However, these family marriages came at a high cost. King Tutankhamun's story shows the health problems that could result. Recent studies of his mummy show he had several medical issues, including a club foot that made walking difficult and frequent bouts of malaria. Scientists believe these problems were likely caused by his parents being brother and sister. As we lift the curtain on European history, we find another powerful family that would face similar tragic consequences. The Habsburg family was one of Europe's most powerful royal dynasties, ruling territories from Spain to Austria and Hungary from the 1100s to the 1700s. 
Like many royal families, they married relatives to keep power within the family. However, this practice would eventually lead to their downfall. One of the most famous Habsburgs was Charles II of Spain, who ruled from 1665 to 1700. People called him El Hechizado, the Bewitched, because of his unusual appearance and health problems. His parents were uncle and niece, just one example of how closely related Habsburg family members were. These family marriages left their mark in a visible way. The Habsburg jaw, where family members had unusually large lower jaws and protruding lower lips. Charles Tude had this feature, along with many other health problems. He had difficulty walking and speaking, and his mental health was poor, making it hard for him to rule effectively. The Habsburg family faced other serious problems too. Many babies were either stillborn or died young, and having healthy children became increasingly difficult. Charles II himself married twice, but couldn't have children, despite this being his most important duty as king. When he died in 1700, there was no Habsburg heir to take the Spanish throne. This sparked the War of Spanish Succession, as different European powers fought to claim Spain. The British royal family also practiced marrying relatives, though not as extremely as the Habsburgs. This tradition started in medieval times as a way to keep power and create political alliances. King Edward III, who ruled from 1327 to 1377, married his second cousin, Philippa. Later, Queen Victoria would marry her cousin, Prince Albert, and their children married into royal families across Europe, earning Victoria the nickname Grandmother of Europe. Queen Victoria's reign, from 1837 to 1901, transformed Europe's royal families in unexpected ways. She married her first cousin, Prince Albert, and they had nine children who married into royal families across Europe. But this web of family marriages had an unforeseen consequence. The spread of hemophilia, a dangerous blood disorder that prevents proper clotting. The condition became known as the royal disease. Victoria's son, Leopold, inherited it and lived a difficult life with constant health problems. Victoria's daughters, while healthy themselves, carried the gene and passed it to their children in other royal families across Europe. By the 20th century, things began to change. Growing knowledge about genetics and changing social attitudes led the British royal family to move away from cousin marriages. While Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip were third cousins, both great-great-grandchildren of Victoria, the royal family has since avoided close family marriages. Our genes tell the complex story of who we are, passed down through generations. But when close relatives have children together, it can cause serious problems. Scientists have made great progress in understanding why this happens, starting with Gregor Mendel's pioneering work with pea plants in the 1800s. Today, we know that inbreeding reduces genetic diversity and increases the risk of inherited diseases. Some isolated communities still face these challenges. On the small island of Pingalap in Micronesia, for example, many people have a rare form of complete color blindness because of their limited gene pool. Modern medicine offers hope through genetic counseling and screening, helping people understand and prevent inherited health problems. This field began in the 1940s when Sheldon Reed started genetic counseling to help families make informed decisions about having children. Interestingly, the animal world shows us different sides of inbreeding. The Florida panther nearly went extinct in the 1990s when inbreeding led to heart problems and other defects. Scientists saved the species by introducing Texas cougars to add fresh genes to the population. But some animals handle inbreeding differently. Galapagos hawks have inbred for generations without obvious problems, developing ways to remove harmful genes. Even insects like ants and bees have unique reproductive systems that work with high levels of relatedness. In remote corners of the world, some communities have lived in isolation for generations, creating unique genetic patterns. One fascinating example is Tristan da Cunha, a small island in the South Atlantic. Discovered in 1506 but not settled until 1816, this island tells an interesting story about what happens when a small group of people live in isolation for many years. That today, about 250 people live in Tristan da Cunha. Because they've been cut off from the outside world for so long, many islanders are related to each other. This has led to some health problems, including a specific type of vision loss called retinitis pigmentosa that runs in families. Isolation isn't always about geography. Sometimes communities choose to separate themselves. 
The Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, FLDS, in North America shows how cultural isolation can have similar effects. This group has largely kept to themselves, with many members tracing their family trees back to just a few ancestors. As a result, some rare genetic disorders have become more common in their community. The rise of genetic science has brought new hope for preventing health problems caused by inbreeding. In 2003, scientists completed the Human Genome Project, giving us a complete map of human DNA. This breakthrough has helped us better understand inherited diseases and how to prevent them. Genetic testing and counseling have become powerful tools. A great example is the Dor Yeshorim program, started in Brooklyn in the 1980s. Rabbi Joseph Eckstein, who lost four children to a genetic disease called Tay-Sachs, created this program to help prevent similar tragedies. The program tests young people before marriage and has greatly reduced genetic diseases in their community. Different places handle the issue of family marriages in different ways. In the United States, laws vary by state. Some allow first cousins to marry while others don't. South Korea had an interesting approach. Until 1997, they banned marriage between people with the same last name and hometown, even if they weren't closely related. Brazil took an interesting approach to reducing family marriages in the isolated community of Canudos. Instead of making laws, they focused on education. Their family health program taught people about the risks of having children with close relatives. By 2005, this simple but effective approach led to fewer family marriages, showing that education can work better than legal restrictions. Scientists have discovered fascinating patterns in how certain genetic disorders spread through populations with high levels of inbreeding. Take cystic fibrosis, for example. This serious lung disease, first identified in 1938, is most common among people of European descent. Surprisingly, carrying the gene for cystic fibrosis once helped people survive cholera outbreaks, but today it causes severe health problems. Similar stories appear around the world. In the Middle East, a blood disorder called thalassemia was once helpful against malaria. On the tiny island of Pingalap in the Pacific, a typhoon in 1775 left only 20 survivors. One carried a gene for complete color blindness, which is why many islanders today can't see colors at all. Today, science offers new hope for treating these genetic conditions. Gene therapy, which can fix problematic genes, is showing promise. In 2017, doctors successfully used gene therapy to treat a form of inherited blindness, and they're working on treatments for other genetic diseases too. The lessons learned about genetic diversity also help save endangered animals. In 1981, zoos started the Species Survival Plan to help endangered animals like lowland gorillas breed while maintaining healthy genetic diversity. The Florida panther story shows how well this can work. When the panthers were dying out from inbreeding in the 1990s, bringing in eight female pumas from Texas saved the population. The same careful planning helps many other species, from Galapagos, tortoises, to California condors. While protecting these animals isn't easy, these programs show how understanding genetics can help preserve endangered species for future generations. If you found this look at genetics and family history interesting and learned something new, please like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating content about science and history. Thanks for watching.